Cargo ships circle outside Shanghai's port, their containers full of semiconductors going nowhere. Inside a sealed customs warehouse, an official slams a red stamp on the manifest. Rejected. In a single year, China has erased $69 billion in foreign chip imports, blindsiding Wall Street and sending Silicon Valley into panic mode. The question isn't why they did it. It's what they're about to do next. The warehouse lights glare off stacks of sealed crates stamped with the word semiconductors in bold black font. Forklifts idle. Customs officials stand motionless at the port gate. A screen in a nearby control room flashes a number that sends a ripple through every boardroom from San Jose to Seoul. China's semiconductor imports have dropped by 15.4% in a single year, wiping out roughly $69 billion in foreign chip sales. No market warning, no gradual decline, just a sudden, unmissable fracture in the artery of global technology. For two decades, China was the world's largest semiconductor customer, absorbing more chips than any other nation. Now import volumes are down more than 10%, and the value collapse is the sharpest since records began. Bloomberg calls it the steepest fall on record. In the first nine months of 2025 alone, import value plunged nearly 20% to $252.9 billion. That kind of hole in demand doesn't just dent quarterly earnings, it rewrites the supply chain map. The impact isn't contained to China. Intel, Qualcomm, Nvidia, and Samsung have all reported weaker China-linked revenues. In 2021, China accounted for over a third of global semiconductor sales. That link is breaking. Yet instead of an emergency spending surge to patch the gap, China is doing something that seems to defy economic logic, cutting its purchases of chip-making equipment. Industry consultancy data shows equipment investment will drop by 90-plus percent in 2026, increasing China's global market share in the sector from 40 to 60 percent. But beneath the surface, another story is running. Since October 2022, U.S. export controls have barred China from buying advanced chips and the machinery to make them, citing national security risks. The intended effect is to freeze China's progress in AI, supercomputing, and high-end manufacturing. But the result so far? Chinese firms have scrambled to redesign supply lines, stockpile key components, and push billions into domestic research and development. The very pressure designed to slow them is actually accelerating their progress. This is where the contradiction sharpens. On one side, China is publicly pushing a Made in China 2025 agenda, with semiconductor independence as a pillar. On the other, it is lobbying Washington to relax certain export restrictions, specifically on high bandwidth memory chips critical for AI applications. Self-reliance and open-door requests in the same breath. Strategy or mixed signals. Either way, it's a move that keeps opponents guessing. Part of that strategy involves people as much as machines. In the last three years, Chinese semiconductor firms have quietly recruited engineers and executives from Taiwan's TSMC, South Korea's Samsung, ASML, and major U.S. players. Some hires come from deep specialization backgrounds in lithography, testing, and chip design. The knowledge transfer is slow but cumulative, and every new hire chips away at foreign technical advantage. At the same time, China's domestic chip output is rising. Official data shows a 14.9% increase in production in 2025, to over 351 billion units. These are all cutting-edge processors. Many are mature node chips used in cars, appliances, and industrial equipment. But they fill gaps that sanctions can't touch. In a geopolitical contest where resilience can matter as much as performance, this really matters. Let's stop here for a second, not to recap, but to reset. So far, we've been looking at the numbers like they describe loss. But what if the import drop isn't an open wound? It's a closed gate. A deliberate pause to regroup, recalibrate, and strike from a stronger position. If you see a cliff on the chart, Beijing might see a launch pad. Consider the pattern. Just months after the record-setting import decline, customs data shows chip imports surging 10.4% year-on-year in early 2025, hitting $385 billion. Integrated circuit unit imports jumped 14.6% in the same period. This isn't random volatility. It's timed re-entry into the market, possibly to replenish stockpiles under more favorable conditions. For foreign suppliers, the whiplash is brutal. NVIDIA's revenue from China has dropped from 66% of total sales to AS low as 5% in the space of a year. 
Taiwan's TSMC saw a 4.5% drop in China sales in 2025. Each downturn forces these companies to either diversify their markets or risk being overexposed to China's policy swings. Yet in critical areas, China remains dependent. High-end lithography machines from ASML, advanced etching tools from LAM Research, and certain semiconductor testing systems have no domestic equivalent at the same performance level. Domestic suppliers like Nora and Amec are making gains, but they still cover less than 20% of China's total demand in some categories. That gap is a choke point Washington and its allies intend to keep closed. As Washington tightens chip export restrictions, a quieter race is unfolding over the software that designs them. Electronic Design Automation, or EDA, tools, dominated by U.S. firms Synopsys and Cadence, remain one of China's most critical dependencies. Reuters reports that in 2025, China imported over $1.8 billion worth of EDA software licenses despite sanctions, funneled through subsidiaries in Singapore and the UAE. Without these tools, advanced chip production stalls before it starts. Yet, Beijing is countering with heavy state investment in domestic EDA firms like Empyrean Technology, which tripled its research and development budget in 18 months. If successful, China wouldn't just reduce reliance on U.S. software. It could rewrite global IP standards from the ground up. Meanwhile, Europe is now caught in the crossfire. Dutch giant ASML, the only supplier of EUV lithography machines, A has always faced simultaneous pressure from Washington to cut off China and from Beijing to keep shipments flowing. In 2025, China accounted for 42% of ASML's revenue, a figure that's just too big to ignore without severe financial pain. This tug of war over tools, not just chips, shows the next phase of the battle. Control the means of innovation itself, and you control the industry's future. Even so, there's an irony in the current stalemate. The U.S. has seen its share of global chip manufacturing drop from 37% in 1990 to 12% today, while China's has risen to the same 12% from almost nothing. The very globalization that hollowed out U.S. production also gave China a foothold in the market it now seeks to dominate. On the financial side, China's largest foundry, SMIC, posted a near 38% drop in fourth quarter profits in 2025 squeezed by overcapacity and export controls. But while profits sink, capacity expands. New fabs continue to come online, many subsidized by state funds. Losses in the short term may be the price of independence in the long term. This tug of war is mirrored in raw materials. China controls large shares of the world's gallium and germanium production critical for chip making, and has imposed export restrictions of its own, citing national security. Here, the dependency flips. The West can block equipment, but China can choke off inputs. Each side holds levers the other can't easily replace. The geopolitical stakes extend beyond commerce. Semiconductors are the foundation of military technology, AI infrastructure, and national security. For Beijing, reducing exposure to foreign chip supply isn't just an economic goal. It's about insulating critical systems from external pressure. For Washington, keeping China behind in chip technology is about preserving an edge in strategic capabilities. The most telling contradiction may be that both sides are simultaneously decoupling and deepening their entanglement. Trade volumes fall, sanctions bite, alternative supply chains are built. Yet neither side can fully sever the link without severe economic self-harm. It's a rivalry, inside a mutual dependence. The 30.4% drop in China's semiconductor imports is not a static statistic. It's a snapshot of a moving front in a long-term strategic contest. Whether it marks the beginning of China's technological independence or a temporary lull before the next buying wave will depend on how effectively each side plays its limited cards. If the United States keeps tightening export controls, it risks accelerating the very self-sufficiency it fears. If China pushes too aggressively for independence, it could alienate suppliers and partners it still needs. The middle ground, selective cooperation in certain segments, remains politically difficult but economically rational. In the end, China says no to foreign chips is less a statement of fact than a statement of intent. Imports will rise and fall, but the trajectory is toward greater control over the means of production. For the rest of the world, the question isn't whether to engage with China's chip sector, but how to do it without becoming hostage to its policy shifts. The cranes at the port will move again, 
Containers will ship out, ship in. The numbers on the custom screens will climb, dip, and climb again. But behind those fluctuations is a structural shift in the global technology order. One that won't be reversed by a single policy, a single deal, or a single quarter's data. The fracture we saw last year is not closing. It's being reinforced into a fault line, and the aftershocks are only beginning. We're glad you're enjoying this video. Please like and subscribe. Check out another video that is now on your screen.